Hello Utah Jazz fans welcome to the channel. Subscribe to the channel to not miss any news and hit the notification bell. Let's go to the news. The Utah Jazz defeated the Los Angeles Clippers in another uphill battle that lasted into the fourth quarter. The Jazz won 110-102, improving their season record to 8-3 and currently in second place in the Western Conference. The Jazz started Malik Beasley in place of Jared Vanderbilt, who lost the game with a strain on his right adductor. Beasley did well in his early days as a Jazz man, scoring 10 points and taking four boards. The Jazz had five double-digit scorers in addition to Colin Sexton's 22 points, led by Jordan Clarkson's 23 points, five assists and three rebounds. The Clippers also had five top scorers in double figures, led by all-star Paul George, who scored three points, as well as eight rebounds and four assists. The Clippers are now 5-5 five five and 8th in the Western Conference. What did we learn from the Sunday night activity? Here are some of the highlights of the race. Will Hardy continues to teach coaching lessons. Coach Hardy continues to impress with his decisions as he leads the Jazz among NBA season guards. Hardy decided to keep Sexton's intense discussion going into the fourth quarter. Sexton technically replaced Clarkson in the last quarter and ended his magnificent night with a thunderous dunk in the closing minutes. Although Clarkson played well, Sexton had a bigger impact on the game, and Coach Hardy was right in his decision to leave Sexton. Game Player, Colin Sexton Sexton had his best game of the season, scoring the aforementioned 22 points and 3 rebounds, with 2 assists and a steal but it was young Bull's foot speed that certainly put future NBA opponents on their toes as he dominated John Wall in the fourth quarter. Wall was selected number one overall in the 2010 NBA draft and has been titled as a blur throughout his career. Although a little older, you can see that Wall is still faster than most, but he was bested by Sexton. The highlight of the night was when Wall saw Sexton drop the ball at the end of the game. What a night for young Taurus. The Clippers looked surprised at the loss. No NBA team has gone 82-0, but there are games you can look forward to. With all the hype surrounding Jazz, I was hoping the Clippers would put this game on their calendar, and I think they will. The Clippers discovered that this Jazz team was the real deal and failed to stop the offense late in the fourth quarter. The Jazz showed more mental toughness and proved that they are a playoff-caliber team. The Clippers seemed to think they had won the contest, but they were wrong. The final note was Wall's inability to score from the perimeter or the foul line, which the Jazz exploited. The Jazz gave one player 10 minutes and they all took at least two rebounds. Only Talon Horton Tucker received a negative score in the plus-minus scoring system, which was minus one. Jazz once again showed the power of a fully productive unit and this is a normal start without Vanderbilt. Jazz buy. Jazz rounds and have fun winning basketball games. The main thing about Jazz is that they have players who really want to play basketball and they enjoy playing basketball every night, which is rare in today's NBA world. More teams seem to have players who don't play every night and don't seem to love the game. The Jazz are showing commitment, mental toughness and versatility, all of which contributed to Sunday's victory over the Clippers. The next one is a rematch against the Los Angeles Lakers on Monday night and I can guarantee that all teams will be waiting for the new Jazz. And you fan, what do you think of all this comment below? Leave your opinion. I'll stay here until more.